morning, everybody. Good morning. Seeing some new, new people back in our midst today. Um, it's been a hard season of COVID, hasn't it? I mean, just the whole thing has just been, been crazy, and it's been tough, uh, especially for churches. But I'm going to tell you something. Our church, whether, whether it's the people that are joining us online, and welcome all of you who are joining us online, or the people who are here in person, you're an awesome outfit, let me just tell you. Uh, when I think about uh, a church our size on the other, you know, trying to come out on the other side of COVID and how much money we raised for our end of the year project, the Act Now thing where we're, we're uh, doing the ACT prep for our uh, underprivileged kids right down here at the Learning Center and how much money we have raised for, I don't even know what we're up to on the Afghan thing, but we're over $50,000 on those two projects. Come on, somebody. This is life-changing, life-changing stuff, and that's the kind of church that you are. It's the kind of church you are. It's the kind of church you guys are online, and I just, you know, my heart just bubbles over with joy when I think about you, when I think about you. I just love it. I love, I love y'all. I love you. Um, so today we're continuing with our Level Up series. Are you any, is anybody leveling up? Come on, let me hear you. Some, is anybody getting anything out of this series? Yeah. Scott got something out of the series. You had to be here. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever gone on a trip and you packed a bunch of stuff to go on the trip and then you go on your trip you unpack your stuff at wherever you're staying, and then you pack it all back up, and then you go home, and you're unpacking at home, and you think to yourself, wow, I packed this. I never even used this. Anybody? Anybody pack useless stuff for a trip? Thank you. That makes me feel so much better. I've been doing that my whole life. I like to read on trips, and I'll pack all these books, and I'll think, what, what am I thinking? How can I read three or four books on a trip? crazy. But uh, I, I am by nature a light packer, though, and I come by it honest because my parents are light packers. Now, we had luggage when I was growing up. We did have luggage. If, uh, if, if we were going on a long trip, we had luggage that we would pack and put it in the car. But if we were going on an overnight or two-night, even like a three-day trip, I'm going to just tell you, and I, I try not to, I don't want to embarrass my dad or anything, but I have seen him walk into a hotel room with nothing but a brown paper sack full of some clothes and deodorant, toothbrush, whatever. And I'm kind of that way. You know, when I go, when I go to the beach, um, you know, a pair of blue jeans and some shorts and a couple of T-shirts, and I don't even take my razor. I'm not going to shave at the beach. Who am I shaving for at the beach? I'm not, going, I'm not going anywhere that I need to be clean shaven. So I don't even shave when I go to the beach. And I put it all in my backpack along with my laptop and maybe a book or a magazine. And I'm ready to go. Lene is different. She's different. Where are you, babe? You back there? Uh, I realized this at, right after we were married. <laughs> I don't, listen, I don't remember much. I don't remember much at all. In fact, when I'm trying to remember stories to tell up here, I'll ask Lene, hey, you remember that story? And she'll refresh my memory because she remembers everything. But I do remember this one thing. Uh, we were packing up to go see my parents. That We were in Montgomery. They were in Panama City at the time. And so we were packing up to go see my parents. And, uh, and so Lene says to me, she says, uh, don't forget the uh, suitcase by the door. So I go and I pick up the suitcase and it feels like it's got bricks in it. I mean, how can you put something that heavy in a suitcase? I mean, it was taking all, all of my strength to lift the suitcase and get it to the car. And I, I told her, I said, this is what I said to her. I said, I said, what are you packing for? We're only going to be gone a couple of days. What are you packing for? And I said, there's no way that two people could use this much stuff on a little two or three night trip. And she said, well, that's just my suitcase. She said, you're going to have to pack your own stuff. 
That's just, that's just what she was packing. So I, I want to ask you, what are you packing for? What are you packing for? Let's switch gears here and let's talk about our spiritual journey. What are you packing for? Are you dragging around stuff that you'll never use? In fact, the stuff that we drag around is designed to keep us from reaching our destination. I looked up on uh, Google, I looked up uh, this, how to go farther on a hike. And these were some of the suggestions. The first one was pack light. Wear light shoes, pack light. That's the whole point today, by the way, pack light. Get your water along the way. Plan so that you, you have some places where you can get water. Isn't that, that's a spiritual principle, isn't it? Don't try to take everything that you need with you on the journey today for next week or the next week or the week after that. You've got a Father in heaven who supplies your need. In fact, the scripture says, give us this day. Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Manna would not keep. Did you know that? Manna in the Old Testament would not keep. It would spoil. It, would, it had maggots and stuff in it. And that's really pleasant to think about. But it was just good for the day. It was just good for the day. So get your water along the, on the way. And don't take breaks. How many of us take breaks in our journey? Oh, I know I should do this, but I'll do it tomorrow. I know I should help this person. I know God's calling me to do this, but I, nah, not right now. I'm, I was, I'm tired. I'm going to take a break. If you want to get where you're going, don't take so many breaks. Uh, here's a good one. I know I should go to church today or I should tune in online, but I don't think so. I, I'll just wait till next week. It'll be online next week, right? Maybe, maybe it will. So don't take breaks. Plan your course. Plan your course. Plan, plan. Make, make some plans, you know? Set some goals. Pray about it. Meditate on some scripture. Very prayerfully and thoughtfully ask God, where do you want me to go this year? And then expect God to give you some goals and some plans for this year. So I'm going to give you three I'm going to give you three heavy powerful amazing principles that will absolutely change your life if you put them into practice. So, the first thing that and this is not all the things that weigh a person down, but I'm going to try to cover as much as I can. And the first thing I want to talk about are the cares of the world. Cares of the world. Can anybody relate to the cares of the world? The cares of the world. What are the cares of the world? Well, there's so many. There's so many. Trying to keep up with the world, that's one, right? So-and-so got a new car. I guess I should get a new car. I'm the only one in my office that doesn't have a new car. I guess I should get a car. That's a care. Um, you know, climbing the ladder of success involves all kinds of cares, right? Um, other people try to put their cares on us, don't they? Yeah? Nobody in here is married. Okay, nobody in here is married. Other people try to put their cares on us, right? Uh, there's so many cares of the world. And they weigh us down. They burden us. And, and Jesus talked about, you know, the weeds as being the cares of the world. that choke out the seed of Christ. And while, as long as you have all of these cares of the world They've got your attention, and there's confusion in your life. You really can't, and this is the reason I put this one first, because you really can't see clearly where God is taking you, where you've been, where you're going, what God's doing in your life, if you've got all of these cares of the world. I want to ask you a question. Are you, are you willing today to make a decision on some things and, and make some changes in your life? in order that you might be able to run into your destiny. I, I, like, I like that idea of unloading 
your burdens and being able to run because that's, that's the analogy. That's the analogy that Hebrews talks about, that we run with patience the race that is set before us. Are you willing? Think about it. Make, make a decision today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some changes in my life if it means that I can run and I can meet some spiritual goals this year and I can become the person that God wants me to be in 2022. It's not only possible, it's probable if you will just stick with Jesus and be willing to make some changes. The cares of the world. Well, 1 Peter says, give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about you. I love this picture of God caring about us. You know, he's got a singular focus. You might think, well, God's got all kinds of things going in the world. He's got all, you know, churches and Christian organizations and ministries and people and, and just all these things going. How could God just have a singular focus? Do you know what it's all about? It's all about one thing. It's about bringing people in to his close-knit family, his body, his church. It's all about one thing. He has that singular focus, and he cares about you. Do you know that he wants you to be free? He does. He wants you to be free. He wants you to be everything that you can be in 2022. He wants you to do everything that you can do. See, it rhymes. In 2022. He is for you, just like this song that we just sang. So give your worries and cares to God because he cares about you. Now, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, and he says, You are experts in the law, but woe to you because you load people down with heavy burdens they can hardly carry, and you yourself will not lift one finger to help them. Some of us, believe it or not, are, are worried and, and burdened and weighed down by all the things that you think God wants you to do that you're not doing. The, the, the goal of this message is not to burden you with things, but to lift the burden from you. That is the goal of this message today. That's the purpose of this message. When I was praying about this message this week, God gave me this and he just says, I I want my people to be free. I want their burdens to be light. I want them to be able to trust me and to run in to their destiny this year in 2022. And for some of you, this is the ultimate level up to be able to unload your burdens. This is one of the most uh, comforting scriptures to me, and, and I meditate on it a lot. And Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary. Can anybody identify with that? Are you weary? Anybody? Are you weary? Yeah. I see some people nodding their heads. I, I'll be honest with you, I'm weary. I'm weary. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. He's saying, my work, my yoke, you know what the yoke is. The yoke is is what they would put on the oxen or the ox and the oxen to pull the wagon, right? So, and two oxen that were together, they would pull together, right? Right? And Jesus gives us this analogy, and he says, I, I'll yoke up with you, and I will pull beside you. And he's saying, take my yoke, take my work, take my calling, take my responsibility, take that upon you, take that upon you, and learn from me. This is the answer to your burdens. This is the answer to your weariness. Um. There is a place in uh, Hebrews that says, um, 
labor to enter into his rest. There is a rest in Christ. There is a rest in Christ. I've experienced his rest. Have you ever experienced his rest? Some of you probably never have uh, experienced his rest. Some of you have. But there is a rest that the scripture talks about. And it says labor. If you're going to labor for something, labor to enter into his rest. And Jesus says here, he says, come to me. Come to me, all of you who are weary and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I love, the, you, you know this, but I, I love the Sermon on the Mount. I love when Jesus is preaching that sermon, and he says things like, you know, the lilies of the field. He said, they don't toil. They don't spin uh, thread into fabric. They don't work hard. But even Solomon in all of his glory was not dressed like these flowers of the field. They're more beautiful than anything that you could do. And so he says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. Do you see the singular the singular focus? God is singularly focused on us and he wants us to be singularly focused on him and his kingdom. And he says if you'll do this, he said all these things, all these cares of the world, all these things that you're thinking about, what you eat, what you drink, what you wear, where you live, what you drive, all of those things that we worry about. You know, where, where you are in the pecking order in, in, in your family or, or where you are in your office or where you are, you know, all of these things that we worry about, he's saying, seek first the kingdom and I'll give you everything else that you need. You don't have to worry about all of those other things. So come to him. Come to him. If you're, if you're weary and you're burdened, come to him. Cast your cares on him because he cares for you. I love this next one. Guilt from your past. I don't love guilt from my past. I'm not saying that, but I love the principle here. Um, how many of you are troubled by your past? I'm the only one. I'm the only one troubled by the guilt from my past. I'm telling you, I'm a type A person. Lene can tell you. Oh, she's walked out. She's gone. No, she's back there. Okay. Lene can tell you. I'm, I'm type A. I'm driven. And I am hard on other people. Am I hard on other people, Lene? <laughs> she says with gusto. I have high expectations. That's a, that's a nicer way to put it. I have high expectations. And the person that I'm hardest on, the person I expect the most from, is myself. Man, you want to talk about beating up yourself. Nobody can beat themselves up like I can. I can beat myself to a pulp. Anybody else? Any other type A's out there? Any other people who are troubled by their past? I'm telling you, I had so much trouble with this. And, and about the time Lene and I got married, I was, re I was reading this book. I picked it up, and I'm, I'm telling you, I just about didn't put it down until I finished the whole book. It was by Chuck Swindoll, and it was called The Grace Awakening. Anybody ever read that book? If you have, a tr have trouble with your past, and if you have trouble accepting, receiving the grace of God, read that book, The Grace Awakening. Or maybe it's just Grace Awakening. But it's by, by Chuck or Charles Swindoll. And, and I was reading that book, and I was trying to get free from my own self. I was really trying to get free from my guilt. And I went to this, this person uh, that she mentored, she was our Sunday school teacher at church, uh, did the young couples class, and Lene and I were in that class, and she and her husband did our premarital counseling. Her name was uh, Karen Healy, is Karen Healy, and 
And I went to her and I said, I know God has called me into ministry. I know he has called me, but I don't feel qualified because of all the guilt that I have. And she said to me something I'm going to say to you. that God knew everything that you have ever, he knew everything that you had ever done and everything that you would do when he decided to save you. And we can go a little bit further than that. We can go further than that. Before you were ever even born, he created works for you to walk in. What kind of works? Good works. He knew what you were going to do 20 years ago, and he saved you. He knew what you were going to do two years ago, 24 months ago, and he saved you. He knew what you were going to do 20 minutes ago, and he saved you. And he knows what you're going to do in 20 more minutes. Try not to do it before you get out of the church today, okay? (laughs) But he knew, and he saved you anyway. He decided to nail all of those sins and transgressions. He decided to nail those to the cross. That's what the scripture says. They are nailed to the cross. That's pretty good. I mean, I I know this is not an amen sermon like last week. Last week was an amen sermon. Amen? Amen. 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 This week is not an amen sermon, but that ought to get an amen. God, he knew you. He knew what you were like. And I'm going to tell you something else. We're all the same. We're all the same. I know how bad you are because I know how bad I am. I know, I know how bad you are. You don't surprise me at all whenever you come to me and say, Pastor, guess what? I need some help. You don't surprise me at all. Because because I know what people are like. I know that your sin nature is terrible. It's nasty. It's selfish. It's prideful. It's greedy. It's it's awful. And so is mine. But but Jesus, he came to give us a new self. Come on. He came to give us a new self. He came to give us a new man, a new creature, a new creation. The Bible calls it all of this stuff. It is the son of the living God being birthed in us. It's beautiful. It's the huias, the son of the, of the living God, an heir of God, joint heirs with Christ. That's the son. That's the new man. That's the new person. It's the new self. It's the new thing. And your old self is not worthy, but I'm telling you that the new self that Jesus came to give you is himself. And he is worthy. And that's what he died for, so that that new person can come through. And he does not want you, Jesus Christ does not want you carrying around guilt from your past. I love John understood this, and I love what John said. He said, even if we feel guilty, God is greater than our feelings. Aren't you glad that God is greater than your feelings? That's why I tell people all the time, don't be led by your feelings. I tell my boys, I say, don't be led by your feelings. If you are led by your feelings, you're going to end up in the ditch. How do I know that? How do I know that? God is greater than your feelings, and he knows everything. You think he doesn't know everything? He knows everything. He knows everything about you, and he still saved you. Let me give you a different translation. This is the NLT. I'm going to give you the NIV. If our hearts condemn us. Man, our hearts can condemn us, can't they? If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and he knows everything. He knows everything about us. Let's go back to the Old Testament, Psalm 103. If you don't, if you don't know Psalm 103, go read Psalm 103. I love Psalm 103. As far as the east is from the west, so far as, the, as he, God, removed our transgressions from us. How far is the east from the west? Anybody calculated that? How far is the east? If you go as far to the, I don't know where this is, this direction is. 
What is it? South, north, south, east. If you go as far this way as you can and as far that way as you can, how far, when you get to the end, how far is that? It's infinity, people. It's infinity. That's how far, that's how far he has taken, and taken our transgressions and removed them from us. He's removed them from us as far as the east is from the west. So why are we carrying these things around with us still? Do we think that he doesn't have the power to forgive? Do we think that his sacrifice on the cross was not enough? What are we thinking? He has forgiven us. Amen. Amen. He has forgiven us. So what do we have to do? We've got to be willing to do something that's really hard. You've got to change the way you think. You can change the way you think. You can change the way you think. <clears throat> Detach yourself from your past and attach yourself to your future. You think, well, you don't know what I have done. Well, I know what the Apostle Paul has done. You know I say this all the time about the Apostle Paul. I marvel at the Apostle Paul because he was the best, wasn't he? He was just the best. Exclude Jesus and Paul was amazing. Paul was awesome. He didn't care what you did to him. He was content to be Exalted, and he was content to be in the lowest dungeon or prison. He was content. He loved Jesus. He loved people. Well, what do you think the enemy was talking to him about every day? You remember what you did to your own brothers and sisters? Do you remember the women? Do you remember the children? Do you remember the fathers, the brothers? Do you remember what you did to them? What did God say to him? My grace is sufficient for you. Someone who, who stood and held the coats of the guys that stoned Stephen to death. The one authority figure in the crowd, he said, I consent, go ahead, stone him. A murderer. My grace is sufficient for you. So this is what Paul said. I am forgetting. He didn't say I have forgotten, did he? He said, I am forgetting those things which are behind me. It's an ongoing process. I'm forgetting those things and I am reaching, stretching, apprehending. He said, oh, that I might apprehend that for which God apprehended me. It's good stuff. You got to be able to change your thinking. Whenever you, whenever you begin to think about the things in your past that you've done, just think about what Jesus did. Just think about what Jesus did. Yeah, but Jesus hauled that cross. On a back that had been shredded, he hauled that cross up that hill called Golgotha. Which is to say, the place of the skull. They call it the place of the skull because there were so many skulls up there. And it also looked like a skull. I have a, a Bible. They built something over it now, I believe. But I have a, a picture in one of my old Bibles of Golgotha, and it looks like a big rock with like indentions, and it looks like a skull. So Jesus was crucified in the place of the skull, and we are crucified with him in the place of the skull. We are having to change what we think. We're having to change what we believe. And so we have to detach, like Paul did, from the past, and we have to attach to our future. So be willing to do that. Now, this, is, this next one is the biggest one of all. It's so heavy. In fact, if you don't get a hold of this one, if you don't get control in this one, you're never going to get to your destination. I'm just going to tell you that right up front. 
And it's a word that's not really a word. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is not a word. Did y'all know that? That's not a word. But Christians have made it a word. It's a noun. It's unforgiveness. It's what we carry around in our heart when we don't forgive other people. Unforgiveness. This is a big one. And Jesus wants us to forgive and he wants us to be forgiven. And this is what he said in Mark. He said, whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you of your trespasses. You know the way he says this? He said it in other Gospels and he, he said it in different ways. It's all, it, all, it all means the same thing. Um, but what he's saying here, the way he says this, he says, Forgive those that you have something against so that your Father, who is also in heaven, may, may forgive you. It's like a law, right? It's a spiritual law. You can't get forgiven if you don't forgive. So forgive so that you can be forgiven, right? So many of us are walking around. We're carrying the trespasses, of others against us. And we're also at the same time having to haul our own junk around because we can't forgive. All right. I have to stop right here and just say, I'm going to address <coughs> abuse and, and that kind of thing. I'll address that in a few minutes. But this is a must. I have... I've looked more people in the eye over the past two or three years than I ever have. And I have said to them, you must forgive. You must forgive. You don't have any choice. Yeah, but. There's no but. You must forgive. When people are sick and they have, they have some problem and they ask me to pray for them, I, I, one of the first things I'll ask is, is there anybody that you haven't forgiven in your life? Because the scripture says, there are many weak and sick among you because you do not discern the body of Christ. That's people. You don't discern the body of Christ. You don't understand what's going on here. You don't understand who you are. You don't understand who they are. You don't understand what your relationship to the world is. You don't understand it. So there are many weak and sick. There are so many people who are sick and weak and people who are in the grave now because they did not ever learn how to forgive and it took its toll on them. It's a terrible thing to carry around unforgiveness. So, uh, whenever, whenever you forgive, forgive. Um, the other day, I was, I was on Facebook, and I was looking at some post, uh, a post that my friend had posted, um, and it was about forgiveness. And I, and I was about to go down and click like, and, um, and I, I saw some comments down there, and, and I know this guy, and we grew up together, and I thought, I'm going to see who's commenting on this. Maybe I know some of those people. And so I went and looked at the comments and the comments were like, that's awesome. You know, amen, great post. I wish we could all do this. Blah, 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 blah. Positive, positive, positive. And then there was one. But, but that doesn't mean that we forget what they have done. Really? 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 Is that how we want God to treat us? I forgive you, but I'm not going to forget what you did. See, it's a wrong mindset. It's not the right mindset. And then a, another person commented right under it and they said, it doesn't mean that you have, ever have to trust them again. Is, is that Bear with me now. I know some of y'all are getting, it's like my dogs when somebody comes to the door. Their fur stands up on the back of their neck. And I know some of you, you're, you're getting your back up over this. I'm talking about a mindset. There, there have been several people in my life over the past few years 
that have stolen from me, and I'm talking about big time, stolen from me. I'm talking about they took my stuff. They stole it. Robbery, okay? Um, and what, here's what the Lord has taught me about that. Forgiving. You forgive the person and you forget it. Isn't that, that's freedom. You forgive and you forget to the point. And listen, it, it's, not, it's not a one-time thing. Okay, you're forgiven and then you don't ever have to deal with it again. It comes right back the next day, doesn't it? Come on. Somebody. It comes right back the next day. And then you say, no, 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 no. No, they are forgiven. And you're talking to the enemy. You're talking to your own sin nature. Your sin nature is saying, yeah, but you know what they did? They took it and they took it. They took your stuff and not just your stuff, but it was important stuff, stuff that you really liked. And they took it from you and you should be angry about that. And I, and I just have to come back that next day and the day after that and the day after that. And I just have to say, yeah, but I forgive them. God forgave me for everything, and, and he's not even remembering my sins. And so I forgive them. And then I started, I asked the Lord, how, how do you deal with this? And so this is what I got. When, whenever, I, whenever I start thinking about that thing that they did and that person, instead of thinking about how bad they are and about what they did to me, I start thinking this thought. You know what? God loves them every bit as much as he loves me. And what he has done for me, he would, he would, he would do it for them. So now when I think about that, the enemy doesn't want any part of this anymore, by the way. Now when I think about that person, I think about how great that person is and how, how, how important. Great is probably not the the right word, but think about how important that person is to God and how much he loves that person, okay? That's the way we want God to be with us, and that's the way he wants us to be with other people. He said, what was it he said? Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, right? This is good stuff, y'all. This is better than what I thought it was going to be. Whoever covers an offense seeks love, but he who repeats a matter separates close friends. Don't raise your hands, okay? But how many of you have forgiven somebody and then you find yourself a week or two later telling somebody else about what they did? <laughs> it's so true. Bunch of heathens. Y'all are just like me. I do the same thing. And then I, what do I have to do? I got to go get with God again. Lord, you know what I did? Oh, my gosh. I told Kyle all about it. I was talking to Kyle, and I told him about that guy that did that to me. Oh, my gosh. I know you love that person. I know you love that person just as much as you love me. So stop spreading the gossip. Stop spreading that stuff around. He who repeats a matter separates close friends. Stop separating people. We're not separators. We're like George Bush Sr. We are, you, is it, was it him? Uniters. I'm a uniter, not a divider. That's what Christians are. We're, we're uniters, not dividers. Okay, let's move on. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. He wants to heal you. He wants to heal you. He wants you to be forgiven. He wants other people to be forgiven. He wants you to talk about it with each other. He wants you to forgive each other so that you may be healed. And the prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. He wants your prayers to be powerful and effective. And Peter said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. There it is again. He wants us to be able to be healed. He wants us to be whole. He wants us to be healthy. He wants us to be blessed. And he wants us to be forgiven. And he wants us to be free. And he wants to fill us with his Holy Spirit. All right. Now, let's get back to the stipulations. You know, the, the things that... 
okay, yeah, I, f- I forgive the person, but what happens if this person, uh, if I'm in a, in a position where I have to, to decide whether to trust or whether to, um, what was the other one? Trust and trust the person or forget. So, uh, so if we find ourselves in that situation, here's what I want to say to you. Don't abandon wisdom. All right? Don't abandon wisdom. This has nothing to do with the other thing, okay? And this is where Christians make so many big mistakes. We either make the mistake of uh, not really forgiving them and remembering everything they did and ho- still holding that against them, even though we've said the words, you're forgiven, or we've said the words to ourselves, you know, I forgive that person. And so we make that, that first mistake is we don't really forgive them because we don't forget what they've done and we don't, we, we have got these stipulations. Well, I'm never going to trust that person again and I'm never going to do this. And I'm never going to do that. And that person's out of my life and is, you know, all that stuff. Uh, Just forgive and forget and let that be that. And if the situation arises where you need wisdom, don't abandon wisdom. Because some people go the other way. Because they've had to forgive somebody, they think that they have to trust that person again. They think they're obligated that they have to bring that person back into their life again. And those two things, they're not connected. It's, they're not connected. So forgive and forget and be free and love the person and pray for them and ask God to do for them what he has done for you. But when it comes to wisdom, don't ever abandon wisdom. Don't, don't if you know that someone has hurt a child and they're trying to get a job at a daycare, get down there to the daycare and let somebody in authority know. If, if, if you know that somebody has stolen money and, and, and a friend of yours is about to turn their, their financial information over to them, don't waste any time. Pick up the phone and call. Don't abandon wisdom. Don't abandon wisdom. Forgive and forget, but don't abandon wisdom. Somebody has abused you or somebody in your family and they want to come back in and you know that nothing has changed don't abandon wisdom. Uh, I love you. I forgive you. But I'm not convinced that this is a good idea. And I have to do what's best for uh, my family. I have to do what's best for my children. I have to do what's best. It, you know, and I don't think anything has changed. I'm, that's just wisdom. It has nothing to do with my forgiveness for you. I, I forgive you. I pray for you. I love, I love you. I have no hard feelings against you. But you have to use wisdom in your life. So here's the thing about, about uh, unforgiveness that you have to understand. is if, if you don't forgive others, you are packing up all of their sins, all the sins of others, and your sins along with them. So you're carrying their sins and your sins. It's a heavy, heavy burden. And I'm telling you, it is it's such a freeing, such a, uh, there's such a liberty that comes from just forgiving other people. And I have to do this from time to time. I have to ask God to show me, is there anyone that I'm holding anything against? And I have to go through that process. It's a good process to do at the beginning of the year. God, am I holding anything against anyone else? So what do we have so far? Cast your cares on him. Cast your cares on him. Be willing to detach from your past. Be willing to detach from your past and attach to your future. In fact, you don't get very far if all you do is try to detach. You've got to detach and attach. You've got to do both of those things. Detach from your past and attach to your future. And don't forget to forgive. All right? Cast your cares on him. He has the singular focus on you. He is ready to take your burdens away. Because he's already carried your sorrows. You know? 
So cast your cares, detach from your past, and forgive. And this is what I want to leave you with. In all of your forgiving, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. This is hard to do sometimes. But Jesus, he wants you to forgive yourself. He wants you to forgive yourself. You know, he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. He he could have said it a different way, but he didn't say it a different way. He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. He, he wants you to do both of those things. He wants you to love others, and he wants you to love yourself. Love, love that, love that new man. Love that new creation. That thing in you that wants to do right. That thing in you that wants to be faithful. That thing in you that wants to believe. That person in you. That new creation in you that wants to be obedient to Christ. Love that person to death. Love them. He wants you to love, he wants you to love this Jesus in you. This new man. He wants you to love him like you love everybody else. Forgive yourself. Because, you know, the same, the same death that he died for other people, he died that death for you too. And Galatians 3.13 says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is every one who hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. That's us, by the way. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. You know what the blessing was? He believed God and it, and it was counted to him for righteousness. That's, that's the good stuff. You think, you think you can't become righteous? You think you can't be the person that God has called you to be? I'm telling you, that person is there. Love that person. Believe in that person. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. That we could be like Jesus. The blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles and that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And that is also righteousness promise of the Spirit through faith. 